Hi, and welcome to Lesson 4 of the Fly to Learn curriculum for x -Plane. Today we're going to be talking about drag. We're going to start off with an explanation of drag, and then we're going to talk about how drag affects airspeed. We're also going to be covering what the flaps on a plane are for, and how these flaps affect both airspeed and drag. Lastly, we'll be covering two major kinds of drag and differentiating between them, as well as talking about how engineers design planes to deal with both of these kinds of drag. As a review, a push is a force is a push or a pull in a certain direction, described by its magnitude or size and its direction. Drag is the force that resists the movement of an airplane through the air. It is directed along the flight path in the opposite direction of the plane's movement. Let's dive in and take a look at drag in action. We're going to head to quick flight setup. However, we're going to shake things up a bit. Instead of our standard Cessna, we're going to select the King Air C90B. This plane has two engines and also has retractable landing gear. Here we are in quick flight setup. Under general aviation, select the King Air. We want to stay at our Seattle airport, flying during the day in clear weather. Go ahead and check out your new plane. Here you can see the manual controls for landing gear. We will be using G to toggle our landing gear. We need to gather some data for this flight. So select Settings, Data Input and Output, and on line 3, select the last two checkboxes for speeds and at line 67 for landing gear deployment. We want to start in the air. So go to location, select global airport, and then a final approach at three nautical miles. Press P to unpause and fly level for three seconds. Note your airspeed as well as the forces on your landing gear. And jot these down in your student handbook. Hit Shift 8 to see the back of your plane. Don't forget to click by the crosshair again to reveal the navigation box. Hit G on your keyboard to deploy your landing gear. Notice the forces that exerted on this landing gear. After flying for three seconds with the landing gear fully deployed, note your airspeed. You may notice that right when the landing gear is deployed, your plane speeds up. This is to compensate for the initial drag of the landing gear being lowered. Be sure and answer any of the corresponding questions in your student handbook. When you are finished, also be sure to go back to data input and output and uncheck the boxes for speeds and landing gear deployment. Sometimes you need a way to slow down your flight. Landing a plane is actually much easier if you are traveling slower. Careful though, if you slow down too much, you'll stall and fall out of the sky 
how do we add drag to slow down our plane? We can't just stick our arm out the window. Engineers have actually developed a way to make the wing bigger by using flaps. This will increase drag. Flaps extend the wings, trailing edges back, and changing the airfoil, or shape, of the wings. This increases drag. It also increases lift, which is important so that you don't fall out of the sky. As you land, the flaps slow down the plane while increasing the lift on the wing, so lift is maintained at slower airspeeds to avoid stalling. Let's try it out. Go through Quick Flight Setup and once again select the King Air. We're going to need to collect data, so select Settings, Data Input and Output, and we're going to be collecting information on the speeds on line 3, the trim, flap, slot, and S brakes on line 13, and then both the wing lift and wing drag on lines 92 and 93. For this lesson, you're going to be flying the plane with both the flaps up and the flaps down. For both of those options, you're going to fly three trials. Be sure and fill out the corresponding tables in your student handbook and use these to find averages. You are going to fly three trials with both the flaps up and the flaps down, and use the averages to compare airspeed, lift, and drag. Answer all the corresponding questions in your student handbook. Let's try two trials together. Go to Location and select Global Airport in a final approach from runway 16 at 3 nautical miles. We are going to be using the keyboard keys 1 and 2 to lower and raise your flaps. To get a better view, select Shift 8. We're going to start with the flaps up, press B to unpause, and fly level for three seconds. Record the information in your student handbook. You are going to repeat this process two more times for flaps up. Let's try it with flaps down. Press P to unpause and use the two on your keyboard to lower your flaps. When they are completely lowered, fly level for three seconds. Fill out your table in your student handbook. You can use the one key on your keyboard to raise your flaps back to their original position. When you are finished, be sure to turn off your data input and output. Drag comes in multiple forms based on how it's produced. Today we're going to be talking about parasitic and induced drag. Parasitic drag is created from dragging a body, like a fuselage, through the air. You can actually experience this any time an object is dragged through fluid. A quick note here, both gases and liquids can be called a fluid. You experience parasitic drag if you drag your fist through the window of a car doing 60 miles per hour or if you drag your open palm through a body of water. Parasitic drag varies with the square of the speed of the airplane. A simplified equation would be speed equals drag squared. This means 
that by changing airspeed results even a little bit, you're going to get a greater change in drag. Engineers try to design the body of the plane to reduce this kind of drag. For example, engineers developed retractable landing gear. Automobile engineers try to reduce drag in cars to increase performance and fuel economy. Think about the shape of a race car versus the shape of a boxy vehicle. Induced drag is created by the creation of lift. Engineers spend a great deal of time looking at different airfoils or shapes of a wing that will give them the greatest amount of lift with the least amount of drag for a wing under certain conditions. Any part of the plane that generates lift generates induced drag. This includes the wing, tail surfaces, and the body.